Have you ever wanted to make a 3D object and then add it to a photo? Well, in this Blender video, I'll show you how. These two cups are the 3D objects that we'll be using. And this is the photo. The combined result will look like this. During the video, I'll be using the new principled shader and the new denoising feature, both of which were added to Blender in version 2.79. So make sure that you have that version or newer before starting the project. I'll be using Blender version 2.79. There are three important things that help make this combined image look realistic. The first thing is the cup shadows that are being cast onto the table. The second thing is being able to see the photo through the glass cup. The third thing is the caustics that are visible on the side of the glass cup. The caustics are the light rays that are passing through the glass cup and casting red light on the table. The object that we're going to add to the photo is this coffee cup that I made in a previous video. I put a link to the video in the video description. We'll start by deleting the surface that the cup is sitting on. So right click it to select it and press X to delete. Next we'll add the photo as a background image. So press N to open the properties panel, put a check mark next to background images, and expand the section. Then click add image. Now click the Open button and select the photo that you want to use. I'm going to use this photo of a cup and fork on a table. You can find a link to this image in the video description. Then for the axis setting, select Camera so that the image will only be visible in camera view. If you're not already in camera view, then press 0 on the number pad. Now increase the opacity to 1 to make the image brighter. Next, switch to the Render panel if you're not there already, and change the resolution to match the dimensions of the photo. The photo that I'm using is 3840 by 2160. These values should match the dimensions of the photo so that the proportions of the photo will be correct. If you don't want to use the full photo resolution when you render your final image, then you can reduce the percentage value to something smaller than 100%. Next we're going to set the focal length of Blender's camera to match that of the camera that took the photo. The focal length of the camera that I took this photo with is about 35 millimeters. To change Blender's camera focal length, select the camera from the outliner and click the Object Data button. You can change the focal length here. We're going to position the cup while we're in camera view, so make sure there's a check mark next to Lock Camera to View in the Properties panel. We don't need the Properties panel anymore, so press N to close it. Now scale, pan, and rotate until the cup is located where you want it, and it looks natural. Now let's duplicate the cup so that we'll have two objects in the photo. When we do that, we need to make sure that we don't move the duplicate cup on the Z-axis because we want both cups to sit on the same surface. So right click the cup to select it. Then duplicate the cup and move it on the X axis by pressing Shift D, then X, then drag it back, and left click. Now I'll rotate the cup on the Z axis by pressing R, then Z, then rotate, and left click. I'll also move it on the Y axis a little. Now we're going to add a surface for the cups to sit on. This surface will have the photo projected onto it, and it will also have the shadows and caustics cast onto it. So press Shift A and select a mesh plane. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 10, then Enter. Now press 1 on the number pad for front view and move the plane to the bottom of the cups. Then press 0 on the number pad to switch back to camera view. Now we'll add a material to the plane, so click the Material button and then click the New button. If the Cycles Render Engine is not already selected, then come up here and select Cycles Render. If Cycles Render was not previously selected, then you may see a Use Nodes button. Click it if you see it. We're going to keep the Diffuse Surface Type. For the color, we're going to add a photo. So click the small button that's next to the white color and select Image Texture. Then click the small button next to the Open button and select the same image that we added earlier. The plane needs to be unwrapped before the image can be seen, so press Tab to switch to Edit Mode. 
then switch to material view so that we can see the image after the plane is unwrapped. We're going to unwrap the plane using the project from view option, but we need to add more geometry to the plane first. If we unwrap it without adding the additional geometry, then the image will look distorted. This is because we're in camera view, which uses perspective view. To add more geometry, press A once or twice until everything is selected. Then click the Tools tab. And then click Subdivide. Set the number of cuts to 100. Now unwrap it by pressing U and then select Project from View. Now press Tab to switch back to Object Mode. The image on the plane lines up nicely with the background image, which is what we want it to do. This is a good time to save what I have so far. I'm going to name it Cups.Blend. When we render our final image, the background image that we added earlier will not be visible. We're only using it for a reference. The image that will be visible is the photo that we projected onto the plane. Since we can currently see both the background image and the image on the plane, this is a good time to set up the lighting. Then after the lighting is set up, we'll expand the size of the plane so that it will fill the entire camera view window. To set up the lighting, switch to Rendered View so that we can get a better view of what the final render will look like. In order to see the background image while in Rendered View, click the Render button. And then add a check mark next to Transparent in the Film section. This cup is going to be glass, so let's set that up now. So right click the cup to select it. Then click the Material button. Then click this plus button to add another material so that we don't affect the material of the other cup. You'll notice that the cup is using the new principled shader. This was added in Blender version 2.79. To make it look like glass, set the transmission value to 1. Let's also change the color, so set the base color to a hex value of FFADA6. Let's also lighten up the other cup a little, so right-click it to select it. And set the base color to 87A5FF. Now let's adjust the light source, so find the lamp in the outliner and select it. And then click the Object Data button if it's not already selected. Our goal is to make the lighting on the plane match the lighting in the background photo. Currently the point lamp is selected, and you'll notice that the image on the plane is not evenly illuminated. This area is very bright, and this area is too dark. So switch to the sun lamp. This lamp represents a light source that is at an infinite distance which will help to light the plane evenly. The strength is set to high, so set it to 5 to begin with. Also, make sure that there are check marks next to both cast shadow and multiple importance. Next, we'll set the size of the lamp. If your photo was taken with dispersed light, like outside on an overcast day, then you'll want to use a larger lamp size because it will create a softer shadow. For example, when I set the size to 1, the shadow is very soft and hardly noticeable. A value of 0.5 produces a shadow that is more noticeable, but it is still soft. You'll also notice the red light shining through the glass onto the plane. This is our caustics. If your photo was taken outside on a sunny day, then you'll want to set the size to a small value. The smaller the lamp size, the sharper the shadows will be. Here's what a value of 0.01 looks like. The shadows are very sharp, but there's practically no red caustics that are visible. Therefore, you need to experiment with the size until you get the right balance of shadow sharpness and caustics visibility. For this project, I've chosen to use a size of 0.2. The next step is to set the length and direction of the shadows, so click the Object button. The characteristics of the shadows are controlled with the rotation values. You can control the length of the shadows and the direction of the shadows. The default values work well for this project, so I'm going to return to those values. Next, we'll set the strength of the lamp, so click the Object Data button. To set the strength, 
Compare the brightness of the image on the plane with the brightness of the background image. Currently the plane is too bright, so I'll decrease the strength to 4. This looks reasonably close. Next we're going to scale up the size of the plane so that it fills up the entire field of view in the camera view window. So switch to solid view. Then right click the plane to select it. Then rotate it on the Z axis by pressing R, then Z, and then rotate it until its back edge is roughly parallel with the top of the camera window. Now press S to scale and scale it up in size until it fills the entire field of view in the camera window. If the photo was taken at a shallow angle, then the plane will also be at a shallow angle like this. If this is the case, then you won't be able to make the plane big enough to fill the entire field of view. So I'll show you what you can do. Let me first undo the changes that I just made. Now I'll press S to scale it up in size, but this time I'll stop scaling before it fills the entire field of view. To make the plane fill the field of view, we're going to bend the back side of it. So press Tab for edit mode. Then press A to deselect everything. We're going to select one of the edges near the back that run from left to right. To do that, hold down the Alt key and right click on the back edge or one of the edges near the back. If you accidentally select one of the edges running from front to back, then just try again. Now enable proportional editing. Set the fall off to sharp. Now press G to move the edge and drag it up until it's past the top of the camera window, but don't click the mouse button yet. You can now use your scroll wheel to adjust where the curve starts. I want it to start about here. Now click the left mouse button to complete the operation. Then disable proportional editing. Now the plane fills up the camera's entire field of view. I'll jump out of camera view for a moment to show you what this looks like. Next, press Tab for Object Mode and then click the Smooth button. Then press Tab again to return to Edit Mode. This will make the plane appear a little smoother. Since we changed the size and position of the plane, we need to unwrap it again. So press A once or twice until everything is selected. I'll switch to Rendered View so that we can see what this looks like before and after unwrapping it. Now press U to unwrap and select Project from View. We're done with Edit Mode, so press Tab to switch to Object Mode. Now we're ready to set things up to render the final image. So click the Render button, and then use this value to set the size of the rendered image. I want my rendered image to be half of this resolution, so I'll set this value to 50%. This will make my rendered image 1920 by 1080. Next, open the sampling section. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 1000. The larger this value is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now click the Render Layers button and add a check mark next to Denoising. This is a new feature that was added to Blender in version 2.79 and it can help reduce image noise in the final render. If you would like to learn more about the denoising feature, then you may want to watch a video that I made on the topic. You can find a link to it in the video description. Now I'm going to save the project. It's a good idea to do this before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. Now we'll render the final image, so from the Render menu I'll select Render Image. If you want to stop the rendering process before it's done, you can press the Escape key, or you can click the X next to the Render Progress bar. This is going to take a while to render, so I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished and this is the final image. To save the image, go to the Image menu and select Save as Image, or you can press F3. I'm going to name this image cups.png. If you want to return to the 3D view, then click this menu and select 3D view. To go back to the rendered image, click the menu and select UV Image Editor. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.